Hey golfers, have you heard what's new in Pengilly? Come play one of over 600 courses and work on your swing utilizing state-of-the-art foresight technology, open by appointment only. Follow our Facebook page, Swan Lake Simulator Golf and Club Repair for information, specials, and monthly tournaments. Welcome everybody to Ash Wednesday. Welcome everybody to St. Valentine's Day and welcome everybody to the Tea with Miss McGill show presented by our friends up at Fortune Bay Resort and Casino. Casino, excuse me, make plans today to visit Fortune Bay Resort and Casino as we've talked about for the long President's Day weekend or any weekend on beautiful Lake Vermilion. Fortune Bay has 172 rooms and a smoke-free resort. Indoor pool for full service marina, RV park, world-class golf, several dining options, bar and 24-7 gaming. Visit fortunebay.com for more details and plan your trip today. Ice House rentals are there. Super Bowl is over. Get your game on up at Fortune Bay because that's where the gambling happens. All right. It is Puka. It is the stars of the show, Coach Reed Larson. To my left, your right. Speaking of the Super Bowl, what'd you think? You know what? It didn't end up any different than the way that I thought it was going to end up because I, by no stretch of the imagination am I a conspiracy theorist, but the NFL wanted the Chiefs to win. Oh, the NFL wanted What? Yeah. 100 You show Taylor more. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I As far as explosive football plays, there were more shots of Taylor Swift in the suite than there were interesting football plays in the entire game. Well, you know, I, I thought the game was very boring until the end, you know, but yeah. we... So I was pre, well, I texted you, I was pre-gaming at the Dutchie. Remember I texted you, I said, hey, come on down to the Dutchie. Wife and I are pre-gaming. And I said, and I didn't want to go through the work of looking. I said, I wonder if there's an over-under bet out there on how many times they're going to show Taylor. So we just made one up at the house. 10 was where we went with, over or under. I took the over. We counted 16, myself and my teenage daughter. So if you have anything more than that or anything different, let us know in the comments. But um, halftime show. Uh. Eh. Blah, blah. That, that's what it, I it was honestly i couldn't care less about any of the usher songs until uh old john came on there and <laughs> yeah, uh <laughs> and uh who was the other one that came on there uh uh ludicrous luda luda, luda. luda. <laughs> that actually was good when those guys it was a, a a pretty epic fail until those guys came on at the end and i was like yeah now this is going someplace <laughs> otherwise take care yeah i I saw it seemed like the first few reactions of social media were good, but then from there it kind of it really dropped. Wow. Off. Um and that's what I thought it was I didn't yeah. think it was bad and I sure did all right, but it just I don't know, the hype around that. I think that kind of jumped the shark. I mean, the halftime yeah. show. And I've heard that artists pay for that spot now. So you pay for the publicity. 124 million. What I heard worldwide viewed it, viewed the Super Bowl. I, I saw something on social media that Usher got paid $675, but all of the different royalties from things that come in could total up to a hundred million dollars. Oh, geez. Okay. Okay. That's what I heard. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So like this, the I don't NFL doesn't pay them more than, uh, than $675 to do it. But then there's, that's what I read. Now, could this be wrong? I, know I saw it on social media. Everything you read on social media is true, <laughs> right? So who knows? But at any rate, they're not getting paid a chunk from the NFL or anybody else. It's the royalties that they get and some of the other things they sign and endorsements they sign from it and yeah. commercials. Yeah, yeah, never all come off of it. Come on, yeah, exactly. So exactly, all the feeders. All right, well, we should touch base here real quick for those that are viewing. You can see we're in some place different. Yeah, uh, why don't you take over, Reed? Uh, beautiful new uh, confines here. Well, you know what? I it's I thought we we've been doing a pretty good job of of bringing the show to you from my classroom and with a backdrop. For a couple of years, we had a backdrop with uh, Blue Eyed Brews when we had them as a sponsor. We've had the backdrop uh, with the jerseys in the yeah. background. I thought, what what better than to bring uh, a backdrop of an arena in the yeah. background? And then we've got the brand new Yanmar Suite here at Yanmar Arena here in Grand Rapids and. Uh, uh, Dale Anderson, our rink manager, was nice enough to say, yeah, go ahead. Do your If you want to do them there, Wednesday nights are free. I don't think anybody's going to complain if you're using the Anmar suite. So <laughs> perfect place to do it. There's hockey going on in the yeah. background. You got the Anmar right here on my side, and you got some banners right there, the there. old Thunderhawk banners in the background. Yeah. So I think it's the perfect background for us to talk hockey, especially – the, the type of hockey we're going to be talking here today yeah. is as we're winding up and getting in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, totally. We're uh, week 13, episode 80. So like I said, 13 Eight. weeks in. Or episode wow. 80, 13 weeks in, and we're officially a day or so away from playoff hockey, really. They, you know, There's a few games tomorrow night. I think that basically will wrap things up 
uh, for the regular season with Boys High School Hockey. All right, subs this week. Subscribers, be just like them. Chad Simons. Yeah, Chad. Corey Coulter. Corey. <laughs> Brian Johnson, who we got a real Brian. special one here. Former superintendent, Nashua Kiwatin Schools. Former superintendent, Mountain Iron Buell Schools. Former superintendent, Ely Public Schools. And the former mayor of Buell, John Clarish. Nice. So be just like Johnny, the Buell Bulldog himself, and subscribe to America's Fastest Growing Hockey Podcast. Um, all right, we we have a pre-roll ad that goes, the Empress, Mrs. Polgrass, known at Coasset Elementary, and uh, it's the uh, Swan Lake Simulator Golf and Club Repair. Yeah. And uh, I'm speaking with them, came across a few gift certificates. Here's what we're going to do for our subscribers. And we're going to go backward to January 1st. So if you subscribe now or have subscribed since the new year, we're going to put you in a, we'll, we'll do we'll do a drawing here together. We'll put your name in the pot, pull a name, $50 gift card to Swan Lake Simulator Golf and Club Repair. So we're going to do some, some simulator golf. We're going to do the drawing in the next couple of weeks. So get it done while it's probably snowing. wouldn't be good if you or I won. Yeah, we'll yeah. probably won't put our name. It's going to be somebody else. Yeah, it's going to be somebody but else. But I wouldn't so. mind it. <laughs> yeah, I might so actually be. just go buy one for myself. Sounds pretty cool. And uh, just to be honest with you, it's that little short little blurb that uh your beautiful wife has been able to put on there uh that starts to show off well because she's way better looking than the she's way better yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah that, that, that's for sure yeah so if you don't look at something don't look at us um so here's how you get entered subscribe on facebook one entry subscribe on youtube you get two entries you have it you can get three entries for yourself so facebook one youtube two Unfortunately, we cannot find, or at least I don't know how to, on Apple, Spotify, Musi, the, the podcast platforms, I can't find a subscriber list. So go to Facebook, subscribe, you'll get one. Go to YouTube, subscribe, you get two. Like I said, up to three entries into the pot. And in the next week, 10 days, whatever, maybe two weeks, we'll get that drawn. So you want to get that done before spring comes and you can actually be outside. So yeah. you want to get you going on the simulator before golf season. Sounds awesome. All right. So crush that like button. Let's roll into playoffs here with our game of the week. Brought to you by Aspire Heating and Control, your local Bryant dealer. And Bryant is the official heating and cooling company of your Minnesota Wild. Aspire specializes in gas, electronic, or electric, excuse me, and hydronic heating and cooling systems for existing and new construction. Residential and commercial, commercial installations available. Services include forced air systems, boilers, heat pumps, mini splits. They are licensed and bonded, so give Justin a call, 218-999-5957. 218-99-5957. Of course, air conditioning season is coming. So if you need a tune-up, give Justin a call today. All right. We'll hit it up off the top of the Thunderhawks with our game of the week. Uh, we talked about trip to the cities, top ranked team, Benilde. Um, why don't you give a little recap how things went down there? Yeah, well, it was uh seven hours around trip and a bus and a charter bus back and forth. And uh a game against the number five rated team in the state. And, and to be quite honest with you, the performance uh, from the Thunderhawks, it wasn't characteristic as to what we had seen the previous three weeks. We had talked about it in our podcast that, you know, the Thunderhawks have been kind of flying high and, and playing good against sure. really good competition, top rated teams like Maple Grove and over St. Thomas Academy uh, with some big wins. And there was uh, four or five wins in a row, I believe if I'm, not correct. No. It's all correct about right. It's all about right. It's all about yeah. right. Um, and some some big ones to note, like we just said. And uh, go down there, kind of thinking we're on the road. Uh, let's try to keep it close. Let's uh, keep it within a goal. Win it in the end. That's kind of the philosophy of when you go on the road and you're playing a really good team, and you know that you're gonna have to battle. Is you don't try to 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 blow everything out in the first period. Try to to keep things close, try to play hard, try to play tough, hard on pucks, pucks to the net. Um, we unfortunately had to take a really big bite out of humble pie. Uh, we realized that we have to do the little things, that we aren't as talented as some of these top teams when it comes to skill. Uh, the reason why we've been able to compete with these, te these teams is because of the tenacity and the heart of our players and how hard they work. So if guys are going to think that we're going to try to do things like stick handle, uh, get cutesy, cutesy, oh, no. it's not going to, and the results not going to end. Right. And you know, coach Clafton said, we've got to get back to the grassroots. Some of the key things that you need to do in order to win hockey games and knock it off with some of the other things, the cutesy, uh, the cutesy stuff. And, you know, easy things that are, that some teams just don't want to do the little things like be good on face-offs like block shots, 
win races to lose pucks, be tough to play against, right? These are really easy to be disciplined, stay out of the penalty box, things like that. Back These are simple things that you can do that seem like little, but if you don't do them, those little things turn into a big problem. And and like I said, it was a big chunk of humble pie. Uh, I think that was needed before playoffs. Not that anybody wants a loss. Nobody wants to lose. But sometimes you need a, a little bit of adversity to learn some lessons. And I think that was some adversity that is going to help us learn, Okay, to be honest. Okay. And then how about Hermantown last night? Yeah, you know, the score ended up four to one. Um, actually, it was at the, the first period, it was pretty much all Thunderhawks last night. Uh, Rapids took it to Hermantown in the first period. It was a lot of offense. There was a lot of a lot of things coming at Dan Calloway uh, down in the north end of Yanmar Arena down there. Uh, <laughs> Rapids takes the one nothing lead, and they've they've got a little confidence going into the locker room. And uh, after the first period, then it was kind of back to some of the same things that we were seeing uh, down at Vanilla St. Margaret. Uh, one of the things that you got to give credit to, to Hermantown for is if 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 you don't get pucks behind their defensemen, their D really are the tail that wagged the dog. To be honest with you, their their D are really good, and if if you don't get pucks behind them and force them to turn and chase pucks, if you're going to get it right to them and they can just quick uh-huh. turn it up ice, their transition is really quick, and they're fast coming through the neutral zone. Fortunately for us, they didn't score on the rush, but they did transition quickly on us and caught some odd man rushes. And it was one of those nights where they didn't score on those odd man rushes, but they got a lot of momentum from them. Yeah. It, they got zone time. We had to force be forced to get out of the zone. Carter was forced to make saves. It, it was the second period was all controlled by Hermantown. Uh, and it was shortly after Dane Calloway kind of took a nick in the hand. Goaltender. Oh, yes. uh, uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the Gunderson line makes a nice rush to the net. Uh, you know, you got Gus Drennan, you got uh, Nate Langlois, you got Caleb Gunderson making a hard push to goaltender uh, Dan Calloway. And for whatever reason, Calloway kind of flies back and his helmet comes off and his gloves come off. The puck is laying there and one of the defenders, I'm not sure if it was Henry Peterson or Esther Brooks or whoever it was, they kind of poke at it with the stick and they get the puck and they cover it, but Callaway has his glove off and he nicks his finger yeah. and his finger's cut. And he quick gets up, runs over the bench. He knows exactly where Kevin Friesen is, our trainer right over oh, on our bench, goes right over and, you know, covers it and it, they start wrapping. It was literally probably a seven or eight minute timeout. Yeah, it was quite a while. And, I, and, I was streaming that one. You know, you can have whatever opinion you want with this. Obviously, safety of the player is an important thing. You want to make sure you take the time oh, sure. to be able to take care of things. Um, it seemed to me that the bleeding was under control. You got it all wrapped up and this and that. It, um, the question that needs to be asked is, is how long of a timeout do you get to get that goalie back in the net? Can you get the other oh, goalie in the net, sure. patch this guy up and then get him back in the net? Uh, where, where's that line? Maybe people can comment on that. I don't know exactly what that was, but to be dead honest with you, not that this was intentional because it wasn't, nobody wants to get their finger right, right. cut, right. but and that he clearly was, was bleeding. That so was a turning a point in yeah. the game. They literally took control of the game after that. Wow. It was everything Hermantown the rest of the night from that point on. Um, there was still some chances for Rapids to make plays, uh, but they just couldn't create the offense to pop another one in. And um, the goals that, that Hermantown scored, two of them were shots from the point. Um, they, they're, they're really good on the D side, on the back end. Uh, Henry Peterson committed to uh, St. Thomas. Uh, you got Will Esther Brooks and you got Drew Nelson who are really good in their depth players on the back end are really good too. And of course it didn't hurt that they had AJ Francisco back in the lineup. He, he's a, a big part of the success they've had recently. He's been, he was gone for three weeks to a month for that youth Olympics. So cool. him back in the lineup uh, created some more offense for those guys and Two goals shot from the point. One was scored on the power play, and one was kind of scored on a turnover that Rapids had, you know, on their own blue line, ended up in the back of our net. That's just the way it works. So it uh, wasn't a, a fantastic outcome for Rapids. It was another shot like, hey, we better figure out we were good for one period or maybe a period and a half, but we need to figure out how to do this for three periods and be ready to go as we go deep into the playoffs here. So a couple of games back-to-back where you didn't get – 
any uh, a real good performance at all in Benilde. And you didn't get an entire game. In fact, you only got about a period or so-ish of great performance in two other periods that weren't great. So there's going to be some things that, you know, we already started with today in practice that we're going to have to get better at. And uh, I think that the staff is positive and, and uh, optimistic about the direction we're ready to go. All right. And the, the direction is the playoffs. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit here. First, I want to uh, give a shout out to the Blandon Foundation. So the Blandon Foundation is offering, well, scholarship season is here. We've talked about this before. And the Blandon Foundation has, boy, these kids are lucky these days, has extended the application deadline for its scholarships to May 1st. Yeah, we nice, talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Oh, God, they're great. So Bl the Blandon Foundation scholarships offers support of $1,000 up to $6,000 per year scholarship staff. It also can connect you with other resources to help you reach the finish line of your educational goals. Students can use Blandon Foundation scholarships for any type of school after high school, certificate programs, community, technical, or tribal college, and four-year colleges and universities. Students who have graduated or are graduating from an Itasca County school, including Blacktop, Big Fork, North Holm, Buganagishik, Hill City, Northland Reamer, can apply. So can homeschooled or online schooled students would have graduated from one of those schools. Students can apply for a scholarship until they are 25 or have completed a bachelor's degree. So if you have taken some time off and want to return to school, you can still apply and receive support. You must reapply for the scholarship each year you plan to attend school. You can apply in three easy steps. Get your FAFSA submission report, also known as the student aid report. Ask Bland and scholarship staff for help if you need it. Get your household's 2022 tax form and fill out the online application at www.blandonfoundation.org slash scholarships. We've got it in the show notes, whether you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Facebook. Go down the show notes. We, we got the link. We already checked it. It brings it right over. So that's where we apply. Um, so like I said, applications are due May 1st. So get on it. Uh, seniors today. All right. So another game we were kind of watching last week, we pre previewed for over at the Memorial Building in Hibbing, Chisholm Hibbing versus Rock Ridge. That was the one I, you were on my nine, obviously covering the Rapids go. I was kind of watching this one. Um, we talked about the rivalry. Wonder if the rivalry is still alive. Well, I'm here to tell you it's still alive. It's still there. Yeah, the place was basically <laughs> packed. Um, not just Hibbing, but a great crowd. Uh, the Rock Ridge uh, parents, students, I mean, they showed up. That old student section uh, behind Rock Ridge's bench was full. Even the student section. Yeah, cheerleaders on both sides. Cheerleaders on both yeah. sides was good, yeah. And yeah, the student sections packed. were full, which, you know, even to him, I mean, I watched Saturday's game in Hibbing, and it was, they were sprinkled in there. So um, good to see. And like I said, the robbery's there. It was hard-hitting. We had an ejection we'll talk about. Plexiglass came on Inge. Um, This was a good one. So just kind of a quick recap of what I was watching there. Uh, yeah. Early in the in the first, uh, Ian Mikulic, basically, it was basically a short end goal. I mean, he, by the time he got the puck, Got it down the other end. He was a breakaway, blocked a shot. Uh, gets a shorty. I'll call it a shorty. He was three seconds into into uh, being full strength. But when he when he actually blocked the shot, it was still a shorty. Um, gets a scoring started for Rock Ridge. It's one nothing. Um, second period's mostly hibbing. They had some power play help in that thing. They only netted one. Tate Swanson put one on the board. Uh, Chisholm starts the third. Uh, so two one heading into third. Chisholm starts the period on the power play. I think boy, a good chance for him to to even it up. Mikulich again, kind of does the same thing. Blocks a shot, goes in the breakaway, scores. His second of the day, another shorty, breakaway. Um, they go up 3-1, and then the gates kind of just, the gates opened. Uh, Rockridge powers to a 7-1 win. Shots were 31-32, in the, actually in the favor of Chisholm. I mean, they had some chances. There was one time in the, you've done this as a forward, I think. Guys got him in the corner, uh, about face off. Ah, low, but low, lower bottom of the circle is going to feed it across. You know, the net. There's two guys in front for Hibbing, basically just off the goalpost. Rockridge guy kind of goes down to block. It gets through, but I think the guys lose track of the puck. And so when by the time it gets to them, it goes through. There's two guys yep. wide open. One, I, I, I only think one of the two moved their stick. I mean, it, it was literally a two foot tap in wide open net. So they had their chances. Those kind of things happen. But I will have to say, Hibbing looked flat. They didn't look, I mean, a home game. In, you know, rivalry game in your own building, playoffs in a week, they looked pretty flat. Um, you've got some well, sometimes you wonder when when you end the season there like that, and you got you know, that's been a rivalry game where they play the last game of the regular season against each other every year. Next year, it's going to be in Virginia, right, yeah. you know, then they're going to go back to hitting the following year. It's always, but it, it was always like, okay, this is a really important game for seeding. 
like now they don't they're not playing in the same section so right, right. you wonder if uh, well was kind of thought was well, it now that they don't play they're not playing for anything is it not going to be as big of a rivalry and that's what people thought last night with with uh the rapids and hermitown game well you got single a versus double a and they're not playing for anything blah 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 and i'm here to tell you that we were actually last night playing for something to go back that that game last night was actually for the lake superior conference championship hermitown oh, conference championship. that's not, right not, not very many people are are all that excited about talking about it but i'm sure hermitown's excited that they've got another banner oh, that sure they can yeah. talk about i mean we would be if we don't want it right right so th- that's probably what we're talking about when you think it is that rivalry still going to be there um, because they're not, they didn't think they're playing for anything. Well, I'll tell you what they're playing for. They're playing for that 30 mile pride. Yeah. They're only 30 miles away from each other and they, they want to battle it out. They still want to have the bragging rights. They want to be able to take that into the summer when guys are doing their summer and spring stuff and their fall stuff, you know, it still matters. Oh, sure. these guys. Sure. Yeah. That, that was clear. That was clear last night. Um, I um, love the crowd though. I, well, I, I, I did watch it. I turned it on after I got home, I flipped it on Minnesota hockey TV and I watched it on there and, and was able to, you didn't get any play by play, excuse me. You didn't get any play right, by right, play, yeah, but yeah. at least we had the camera and I was able to turn the sound on from the building. And there's obviously there was some emotion in that game. It oh, was yeah. a hard hitting game, like right, you right. said. Uh, and there was some, uh, some emotions. There was some lack of discipline and maybe we'll talk about that. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. We can get into that. So one of the big things that came out of the game um, well, penalty minutes were 36 to six in favor of Rock Ridge. And then towards the end of the game, in favor of Rock Ridge, as in Rock Ridge had the 36 minutes. Exactly. Rock and Ridge Hibbing had, had the six minutes. Yeah. Okay. And then there was, I don't know, five. If that's the one problem with Minnesota Hockey TV. You don't know the time. I'd say five ish minutes to go. There's a kneeing incident. Uh, Hibbing player, you know, I, I actually been need. I've actually done the kneeing, never did it intentional. Uh, but uh, so Rock Ridge player goes down, whistle does get. I don't even know what the whistle was for, to be honest, because I don't think they called a penalty. No, I think play. it was hurt. I think, oh, hurt, yeah, because players are nice. So, um, well, you kind of know more, you you because you talk. So, so uh, what? Cope Robinson is talking to, to the ref. Yeah, I mean, there's so the players is right at center ice. It's yeah. literally right under that big beautiful scoreboard that right. hangs from the middle of the Memorial Building, and it happens right at center ice. And uh, the hitting player steps up to make the hit. Uh, Rock Ridge guy tries to kind of cut back, and sometimes when that happens. You get caught with a knee hitting a knee, and the, the knee kind of stuck out. I don't, I don't think anybody tries. No, to I, do think, that. I don't think it was like it's a, an accident, but it's still a knee. It wasn't a knee. vagrant, and knee. but there was no call on it, right. so they think there was some frustration from the Rock Ridge bench. There was frustration from players on the ice. One of the captains, uh, Rory Cope Robinson, goes over to talk to the referee, like, "Hey, are you going to call something on this?" I mean, our guy's rolling around on the ice like he's got a half a kneecap now because of this. And but, but like, seriously, what are we going to do here? I mean, you've called 30 some odd penalties on us or minutes on us. Uh, I mean, you can just imagine what he's telling them. Like, Hey, you, you got to try to clean this up a little bit and, and give our guys a little bit of a pat on the back for battling through all these penalties. And, um, and then Cope Robinson skates away. Who knows exactly what he said? And, Boom, 10 minute misconduct. So he must have said something not so nice right, to right. the referee. Ref dimed him. He's a got a misconduct. And, and then and then yeah. go ahead. Yeah, then he heads to the of course Rock uh, Coach Johnson, Rock Ridge must want an explanation. Uh well, let's just say referee Perpich, as we know with Brian, he's actually been on the show. He heads over and he's not there for 10 seconds. And not even, yeah, not even close. Another and out. So uh Coach Johnson gets thrown out. I guess my question for you, and you're in that you're He's just Coach Reed Larson. So if you're in that position, is he, you know, obviously emotional? I mean, Rock Ridge is probably up four to one or five to one. They're pretty in control of the game. Like I said, about five minutes left. But he, are you kind of giving it to the rep? Just hey, I gotta, I gotta show my guys I support him. I'm here for him. Is that well? Is that- you know what? There's a time and a place. There's that moment where there's a lot of emotions going on, and your players are emotional, and there's probably a lot of guys that are ticked off because their buddies rolling around with a half a kneecap on the center ice. And, and they're probably the coach. There's a time where coach needs to talk to the referee very sternly so that the rest of the guys on the bench know that coach is fighting for us right now. Like he's doing something, he's saying something. However, you probably got to watch some of the things you say, especially because you just saw Cope Robinson get dimed. I'm guessing Perp wasn't in a very good mood when he skated all the way over there because he kind of beelined it over there. Yeah. Like he right over. And as soon as he didn't get five words out and I'm sure got spoken over with some 
how's your father, uh, whatever that was coming from Ben. Who knows what just was just get a Super Bowl. That and I'm was, pretty sure that's what Ben asked. Her, yeah. What do you think of the Super Bowl? Yeah, that's what he asked him. It, it so and I think it's just there's a time that you gotta let everybody in the rink know you're standing up for your kids. Uh, but I'm sure it's what did he say? How did he say it? I wasn't there, so I'm not gonna say that Coach Johnson shouldn't have said what he said because I don't know what he said. Right. And I wasn't there because I didn't see how Perpich dealt with it. Uh, Perp could have probably just went right over there, and he knew when he was going over there. I've seen refs do that before, too, that he didn't even have to say anything. He knew before he went over there that he was kicking somebody out because he was wound up. Uh, that that could have been the case, too. I, I know Perp well enough to know that he probably was wound up himself. That's probably not the case with him. But there are refs before that they, you, they, you don't have to say anything. They're skating over there, and if you say one peep, you're gone. Yeah, 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 so yeah. who well, knows what was keep control of the game maybe a little bit, too. You know I mean? If, but I do know the heat of the moment in that situation. In a normal situation where the coach gets kicked out of the game, it's a game disqualification for the coach. It's an ejection. Typically meaning that the coach doesn't get to be on the bench for the next game. Yeah, That's usually the case. Well, from looking at the score sheet and talking to some people that I've talked to, sounds to me like Coach Johnson didn't get a game ejection. They just gave him a, a, a misconduct. So that tells me that the score sheet after the game got changed by Perpich. Okay. Perp probably went in and said, you know what? Things got a little heated. I probably should have had a little bit of thicker skin. He said some things I should have let go. I didn't want to take it at the time. Get out of here, but I'm not going to give you a game, yeah. EJ. So he, he changed it probably and said, I'm not going to make you sit the next game. Okay. Cool. So, yeah. So and that's what I've heard. If it's different than that, then I, I strike me down. I don't know. It sounds to me like he doesn't have to sit the next game. Okay. All right. Anything else on this one? Nope. All right. So uh, palm the like button. We'll move on to our bracketology for the upcoming playoffs here presented by Iron Ranger Apparel, Thunderbird Mall in Virginia. Of course, the ODR line. This is what you're going to want. Now, look, we got the caps. So listen, we're going to be talking about playoff hockey. You want to be ready. When you get your interview, kids, what do you want to be wearing? You want to be wearing ODR swag. So when you get that interview after the game, TV, radio, because radio is on YouTube a lot of times, or um, newspaper, and you get your picture taken, get your ODR swag today. You find it at the Thunderbird Mall, uh, Iron Ranger Pale over there, the Gift Buyers Paradise. If you're looking for something, um, Valentine's Day is today, obviously. If you're a little bit late, go get your honey or a him, a little something tomorrow over at the Thunderbird Mall. Iron Ranger Pale is where it's at. All right, we do a little bracketology, break things down here as we're getting ready for the playoffs. So uh, Section 7A, I'll kind of go through. Now they haven't. They're, they're not done with theirs yet. I don't believe they're, they're right done yet. seeding yet. I could be wrong because I, I, I think actually North Shore plays tomorrow. I think they it, have another game. So, uh, but let's kind of break down what we're thinking and and uh, and maybe throw in a dark here. So, excuse me, a dark horse here. So, um, one, two, three, four, five. Or what do you want to do? One, two, three, four. Maybe I can, I can tell you who one, two, three, and four are. After that, I you know not a hundred percent sure where Greenway and. The falls and our shore and Ely, where they all fit. I yeah, I'd have to do a little bit more research. Yeah, I've kind of been too. out of the game a little bit on that one, but I know I do know that one through four is pretty cut and dry, and I don't think anybody on the planet can argue that Hermantown's going to be number one. There's no question about it. They're number one in the state. They're probably going to be sitting in the state championship game, playing against either War Road or East Grand Forks. Take your pick. Or it could potentially be a St. Cloud Cathedral. At any rate, that that section, the number one seed is going to be Hermantown. There's no question about it. Hibbing probably thinks they have some arguments for the number two, but I really don't think so. I think that Cloquet is the number two. Okay. I think they're the clear number two. Uh, Hibbing, you got some good arguments. You're having a good season. You're playing well, and uh, but you're a year away from being in the one and two spot. So I think they're the three. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to say that Proctor is going to be the number four. Uh, to me, uh, that's an interesting number four because now if everybody wins in the quarterfinal that's supposed to, that's going to be the rival, excuse me, the rival Hermantown Proctor semifinal. Mm. <laughs> that That is going to be a fun semifinal for people to watch on semifinal if they play on Friday or when they're going to actually play, I can't remember when their semifinal is. Our double A one is on Saturday. I, well, the do they, do they so. play them all Saturday? Do they play early? And you guys I don't play know late? because we didn't do that last year. Last year, there was a women's game at UMD. So they had the single A's, I think, on Friday. Oh, okay. And they had the double A's on Saturday. And we played 
noon and two, and the women's Bulldogs that's played right. on they were at the night. evening. So I don't know. I, I, I'd have to look at it. That was the evening in Hermantown. Yeah. Uh, so, so right to the end. We'll get the dates a little bit more out to you for semifinal Friday or Saturday uh, next week during the show because it will be kind of the thick of, hey, people, these are the people that are going to make the final four. Yeah. So we'll get to that point. Um, there's a play-in game here this weekend for both. So yeah. we'll talk about that here when we get to talking about the double. And one thing we know that's not going to be the plan is North Shore. So congrats to North Shore with a, probably going to get the five seed. So, um, I mean, congratulations. I mean, that's, I mean, I know they've been in the playing game in the past. So, uh, you know, pretty solid year for North Shore. So congrats there. All right. Section seven, double A. This one is final. You guys are done. Yeah. This you guys are finalized. quick. Will they, will they do a zoom meeting today? Well, I think everybody had their, there, there was no meeting. All you did when you when you sent it in is you you emailed the head coach emailed to the section director, which is Sean Road out of our uh, whatever Road, what's his first name Road from Duluth East, athletic director. Oh, Road. I don't know. Um, okay. He he is the director also, of Section Seven, and all the coaches, head coaches, had to just give their rationale, say what seat they think they should be in their email. This is what we think we should be. And this is why Come put your bullet points down. Okay. And then you go through and you seed all of the teams, how you think they should be seated minus you, you don't seed yourself. Oh, okay. So if you saw yourself as the number one seed, drop yourself out of there. Who's your number two, because now they're number one. Sure. So that's yeah. how you do it. So you'd be seeding. There's 10 teams in Section 7 AA. We seeded nine of them in a row. Um, and that actually most teams sent their seed in last night so that they needed to be in this morning by 10 o'clock. They get taken and looked at. They get tallied by road. Then they get sent back. This is the seed for the first vote. Do people have arguments? Do they think they should be someplace else? If there's some valid arguments, they would reseed. I don't believe they had to reseed. I think everybody got okay. what the first they ballot so assumed they were going to get or close to. Okay. Um, so it came out today. The seating is ready to go. And as of right now, or not as of right now, re this is what it ended up as. It ended up Grand Rapids got the number one seed. Um, Andover got the number two. Duluth East got the number three. Rock Ridge got the number four. Force Lake was number five. Yeah, number six was Duluth Denfeld. Seven was Duluth Marshall. Eight was Anoka. Nine was Cambridge Isani. And 10 was Northern Edge. So the way the bracketology works is, is uh, single A will be the same. If they've got more than eight teams, they're going to have to have at least one play in in there. Um the seven and the 10 seed play in on Saturday for the seventh seed. So whoever wins between Northern Edge and Duluth Marshall, Duluth Marshall will host that. The winner of that will play and Okay, yeah. And the eight and nine seeds will play against each other to see who gets the eight seed. And that'll be Anoka. They're going to host Cambridge Isani. Whoever wins between those two will come up to the IRA Civic Center, Yanmar Arena, yeah. and play against Grand Rapids, the number one. And that will be Tuesday. Next That'll be Tuesday, Tuesday the 20th. Yeah. Uh, that's the quarterfinal games. And if you start looking at some of the quarterfinals of that section, uh, they, there could be some interesting games. I'm not going to call any upsets. I'm not going to say that. But I'm going to tell you, there's some interesting matchups here. Well, well, let me ask you this then. We'll start with seven double A, dark horse. I mean, who do you think could could maybe surprise some people? Then you don't have to really pick the games, but you you know, and I'll give you mine too for both. But who who are you looking at as a dark horse? Well, I'll tell you what. If I were one of those teams that were in that um, four, five, six, seven range that were looking up, I wouldn't want to play Force Lake. See, Force Lake is thinking, scary. Yeah, yeah not I'm just, serious. They they've they coming from the team that got beat by them the third week of the season. I can tell you, I'd be a little concerned playing against those guys because they beat good teams and they've got a decent schedule. Uh, beat Rapids the third week of the season. They beat Cole K in overtime. They beat some teams. They've lost to some teams too. I mean, people who lost to Blaine. Guess what? Blaine beat somebody that was good too. So let's not throw that out there. Right, right. I mean, there's some uh, – that I'd be a little bit concerned if I'm playing Force Lake. Like I, I would just be ready. Like yeah. Just be ready. It's going to be a battle. There's not going to be a blowout in that game. I'll tell you, that's going to be a one-go game anyway. 
between them and Rock Ridge. Yeah. I think well, Rock uh, Ridge is more talented. Uh, then, see, that's what I've, I've kind of got Rock Ridge. You know, I knew you were going to say Forest Lake, and I kind of like, you know, coming off that, I mean, seven goals. And I said, they've got that balanced. Yeah. So there's nobody that just like, oh my gosh, look at that superstar for Rock Ridge. They just got the balance and they just come at you. Well, they're they good. Come Rock Ridge is talented. I like their goaltending. I like their yeah. back yeah. end. They got a, a top line that has been dangerous up front. All I can say is, is that line better be scoring goals? Because if that top line is scoring goals, we can have our time with if they're not scoring goals, they're yeah. going to have our time winning because the Force Lake has got a good goaltender. They do. And they're tough. They're tough to play. Um, obviously, I want to see the Northern teams because Section 7 is always been a Northern section. Sorry, Force Lake, but it just adds. Yeah. So I, I'd like to see that it, it be able to give us the opportunity if we can get through our quarterfinal game, which would be an Oak or Cambridge Isani. I wouldn't mind playing that, okay. to be honest with you. So there's some other dark horses in there too. I mean, not dark horses, but interesting matchups like – how about this one at the Heritage for the three, the three and the the three and the six seed play? Yeah. How about yeah, Denfeld versus East in the quarterfinals? Yeah. That's a like cool. how's the Heritage Center gonna look on Tuesday night? <laughs> Is it gonna be packed or what? How about this one? How about Duluth Marshall and Andover playing with Keenan Smith in the nets? Keenan Smith for a goal uh, that's a goaltender for Duluth Marshall. Is one heck of a goalie, ninth grader. Yeah, big. he is good. Um, that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I was like, "Gosh, I sure hope that we get that number one seed because I don't want to play Duluth Marshall right right now either." Okay. Like, there's teams they've been three. They lost three to two to Duluth East last night. Yeah, tied Denfeld. Tied Denfeld. I mean Thursday. We could go. Yeah. yeah. So if a goaltender is out there that can make a huge difference, he's one that can do that. Sure. So the there's game. some interesting matchups that are in there. Uh, I'm not calling any upsets. I'm not going to call any. I think just in my mind, I think the teams that are supposed to win probably will. And they'll make it on to Amazon. That's just my thought. But uh, but if I were playing like, a couple of the ones that I'm a little bit like, uh, <laughs> the, the, you better be ready. That's all I can say. Sorry. Uh, all right. How about uh, Dark Horse 70? You know, I I, th I still think that Hibbing Chisholm can be a dark horse. I still think that they could do some things because of their talent level in there. I, and I mean a dark horse to to be scary in that semifinal game. They're not going to really match up against uh, – the four is going to end up playing against Hermantown in the semi. Right. I mean, they're going to get through uh, rather easily – in their quarterfinal game, uh, both both of those, Colquay is going to get through yeah. rather easily. I hate to say it, uh, uh, Hibbing Chisholm is going to get through rather easily. Um, you're going to need a calculator probably to add up the goals that Hermantown's going to score in their quarterfinal sure. game, just like it is in the state tournament when they play yeah. in that quarterfinal. Um, <laughs> you're going to need a calculator probably. Uh, but at any rate, uh, I see Hibbing putting up a pretty darn good fight uh, with their second crack at that. Uh, Cloquet in that semifinal. I think that's going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah, because I kind of like Proctor. You know, we I'm talked about feeling. Miles. You know, Ryle's all here, too. So we talked a little bit about this last week. So Proctor in 2024, 9-2. and two, They're in Northern Lakes tomorrow. So there's a, a team, another team that plays. Um, so that, that's why we know single A is not, not finalized yet. But, yeah, 9-2 and two in 2024. Ryle's and Nets. I like oh, that. You know. I, I can't argue with that. And I guess if I would have thought a little bit farther along, I could have thrown that. A little bit of a plug too like you're talking about a, a couple of goalies in that section like there's two goalies in that section that are that in my mind and this is just my mind who knows how deep it goes but it's <laughs> i feel like there's going to be some pretty obvious frank brimsek award nominees that can be in that section dane calloway should be on the list that's a hermitown goalie yep. and aj Riled should be on the list for for guys that are being considered for the top goalie senior goalie in the state aj routes could make a difference he almost did when they when we had that game on my nine yeah. a month ago with hermitown hermitown yeah. proctor who to one it was over one? i think it was overtime two to one two to, yeah yep. something like that yeah so it kept him right there at any rate I, I can't argue with you proctor could be a dark horse too no yeah. all right Anything else? No. All right. Scores and more. Let's move on. Uh, the Ring Sports Bar and Grill just down from the Hockey Hall of Fame. Use your gift cards. We encourage you to, uh, during the holiday season, get those gift cards. Time to use them. Breakfast, full bar, full menu. It is now Lent. As you can see from the ashes. Uh, Friday fish fries. So get there for the Friday fish fry. Daily specials. 
hockey themed establishment, give Michelle a call 248 8582. Um, or the ringsportsbarandgrill.com. Let me say that again, the ringsportsbarandgrill.com. And remember the Ring Sports Bar and Grill for your functions, your bank banquets, your breakout rooms that you need, uh, company events, lunch meetings. Uh, you got the uh, Kiwanis Club, the Rotary Club, stuff like that. They've got the breakout rooms. So uh, get a hold of the Ring Sports Bar and Grill today. All right. So last week I was talking about Wyatt Farrell. He was, I misquoted he was. I thought he was going for the single season goal record. My buddy Adam Nori sent over and said, "Hey, the single season uh, record is uh, Jackson Nelson from Laverne back in 2016. He had 78 goals." But then I had someone else say, "No, no, you're incorrect. He's going for the all time." So Wyatt Farrell has 48 tucks this year, puts him five shy of Ben Hanowski's all time record of 187. So Farrell's got 182. And five was, shy. Five shy. Five they got one more game left, and he's got a game tomorrow against Laverne. So, well, Laverne they, isn't anything to shake a stick at. Like it, they're they're not anything that's horrible. Like if Laverne plays, they yeah, could think, shut that down. Right, right, they yeah. Could, but uh, if you got a pure goal scorer that's got that many goals in their career, a five goal night is not unheard of. Yeah, so he just needs a little Taylor Swift on his side. You know, maybe Taylor will show up, you know, so he needs, he needs, he needs to put together the, you know, he's, he needs, needs that, uh, he needs that, a little bit of that Mahomes in him uh, to get her done at the end. But uh, yes, uh, good luck, Wyatt. So Ben Anowski, 178 career goals. That's where we're at. Um, and then Ilsa, Elsa, I don't know what it is. You can please comment. Ilsa Lindemann, Duluth Marshall. Uh, she has moved into a Miss Hockey semifinalist candidate. 57 genos, 86 points for the St. Thomas commit. So we just want to say congratulations, some massive numbers for her. Awesome. All right, scores and more from the week that was. We talked about this two weeks ago. Bemidji almost beat Warroad in Bemidji. Last night, Bemidji up at the Gardens, 4-3 Warroad win. It takes a goal by Warroad with 53 seconds to go to get the win. So Bemidji getting close. Um, Tavin James. Ryan James, buddy of mine, his son with the, the goal. Um, so war over Bemidji, 4-3 to three up at the Gardens. Ely, 5-4 winners over Moose Lake Willow River. Rozo, 9-2 winners over Duluth East. Now that Noah Ernest from Rozo commit to St. Cloud, I yep. believe. I think he wants to change his commitment. You know how I know? I've heard that. He's down in Duluth on Friday. Seven points against Duluth East. So he was putting it on for Coach Sandal. I think he wants, uh, to, change, uh, uh, he wants uh, to change his commitment. But anyway, congrats to Noah. <laughs> Seven-point performance uh, down in Duluth against East. Denfeld, 2-2 tie to Marshall. We talked about that. Greenway, 2-1 win over Park Rapids. Congrats to the Raiders. Proctor, 8-0 winners over North Shore. North Shore, 6-3 winners over I Falls. Uh, Brainerd was drubbed by Moorhead, 8-1. to one. Marshall, you talked about that, the 3-2 loss to Duluth East just last night. That yep. was last night? Okay. Hermantown, 7-1 winners over Chaska. Cloquet, 5-4 losers to Rozo. Here's a rivalry game we got to go see one day. I falls with a 5-2 loss to Fort Francis. That sounds like another good one. Like, that sounds like a bad one. We're going to go to the Fort Francis side. We're going to go over and see what they're doing over there. Um, uh, Duluth East with an 8-0 loss to Rogers. Rock Ridge, 6-0 winners over Northern Edge. So, you know, Rock Ridge ends the season 5-1 in their last six. So I think they have 19 wins. I think they're 19-5-1. Sounds about right. It's, so they, it's, a, it's a heck of a record. Been, yeah, it's been a great year. Uh, Chisholm Ibbing, 2-1 winners over Detroit Lakes on Saturday. And the Walleye Scott CFP, Dino Hornets update, 3-1 losers to Tonka on Saturday. I believe that was. I think it's pretty clear who the number one team in the state is. And... Number two bounced around a little bit. Why is that it was number two? And then Edina takes over number two. And you know what? It's it don't matter. You can be one, two, three, and four. And take a look at who is in those sections. Like why is in the same section as Chanhassen, I believe. Oh, yeah, Edina's yeah. in the same section as, uh, or no, Minnetonka is in the same section as Chanhassen, I think. And then YZ is in the same con a section as Edina and Benilp. Yeah. Like you got three of the top five in the same section and two of the other ones. Yeah. You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see some playoff One of those teams is not, two, three of those teams we just talked about are not going to stay. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Oh, and real quick, I caught the uh, GRG Lightning girls game here Saturday. Pretty yes. good game against Blaine where they beat Blaine three to two. Um, 
I got here a little late. The parents said, we, we first five minutes, Raj, we were just pumping them. Then penalty. So gives Blaine a little momentum. But a two, uh, so I think it's one to one heading in after the one. Rapids comes out, pumps two in the second, uh, three to one heading into the third. Blaine gets one with about six minutes to go. Makes things interesting. A couple penalties on both ends. But um, so GRG Lightning pull it off. They are playing Andover at Andover tomorrow night. To punch I think the their game card. is at Blaine. I think oh, that's America. the, if that's a neutral site, I mean, he's still going to drive three hours. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm screaming. It does. I don't know how that's neutral. I, you know, at, at any rate, it's, I'm just complaining because I'm a Northern guy. But <laughs> like how can Andover drive 10 minutes to Blaine and Rapids drive three hours to Blaine and that's neutral. Like why can't, why can't neutral be cloquet? Sure. Yeah. Right. Or something. Yeah. You know I mean, Moose Lake, Willow river. Yeah. Uh -huh. Whatever. Let's go. All right. Anything to add to episode eight? No, just a huge congratulations to the Lightning, you know, for, for their season so far. And, you know, just like we said at this time last year, when we're talking about you going into the section finals tomorrow, why not go in there with the idea that you can win? Because at any given night, it can happen. Oh, can happen huh? Any any time. I mean, it's it's time for someone else to win the section other than Andover um, in, in the girls' section. And, yep. and I'll say that too. It's the same for the boys too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We're warming up next week's going to be a big episode. Catch us for the playoffs. So please comment. We appreciate your comments. You want to contact us privately, goat sports media, LLC at gmail.com. Hammer the follow button, hammer the like button. Of course you have a chance to win. So do that right now on Facebook and YouTube. Two shots on YouTube, one shot on Facebook. Uh, find us on X T McGill. Find us under T with Miss McGill on Instagram, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the Musi app. If you're looking for us on Facebook and or YouTube, it is Goat Sports Media LLC. Leave a review for us over at Facebook. Merch, 20 bucks for a tee, 45 bucks for a hoodie, cash at Venmo, PayPal. We do all the good stuff. If you're in the doghouse for Valentine's, he or she, we've got merch. As a matter of fact, I'm in Bemidji tomorrow. If you want some merch, get a hold of me. I can have it. we we'll meet up somewhere. I'm Chisholm Hibbing Eveleth. Quad cities, all that on Friday. I, I'll, I'll deliver it to you. This right? does so, look like a Valentine's Day kind of that's thing. That's what I mean. So if you're all late, this looks like a heart, it's yeah. red. Yeah, this year's theme of heart. Looks like. So if you're, uh, you got a little late, you got a little damage control to do, T with Mr. Goes here to hook you up. Just let me know. Go to sports media, LLC at gmail.com. Let me know. All right. And the thank you, of course, to the greatest partners on earth, the Ring Sports Bar and Grill, Blandon Foundation, Iron Ranger Apparel, and ODR Apparel. Fortune Bay Resort and Casino, Aspire Heating and Control, Iron Range Goalie Academy, and Team Minnesota Hockey. So for Reed Larson, I am Puka. Get out there and be your dream. You're tuned to the Tea with Miss McGill Show.